Hey, this is Daniel Decay from Toronto's Diamonds, and you're watching Channel 33 RPM. Hey guys, my name is Frank. The weekend is here. That means it's time to kick back, relax, grab your favorite beverage, and talk music. And today's episode special guest, Daniel Decay from the one and only Diamonds. If you're not familiar with Diamonds, they play absolutely killer hard rock and metal, loud guitars, big hooks, big choruses, a few of my favorite things. For this episode, I sent Daniel over a bunch of questions. He answered them and sent the video back to me. He talks about record collecting. He talks about digging for vinyl in Japan, meeting Alice Cooper, opening for Kiss, tons of stuff. Check it out. So I'm from a Canadian hard rock heavy metal band called Diamonds. We're a female fronted group. This is our latest record. It's called Never Wanna Die. Uh, it's 10 balls to the wall, kind of heavy metal, cl classic riffing heavy metal, classic tone sounding, uh, clean vocals, uh, a lot of harmonies. Uh, for someone who's never heard us, I'd say if you're a fan of any of the heavier of the, the glam stuff from the 80s and 90s, the raw kind of energy of punk rock and uh, just into heavy and modern well-produced music in general, um, I think this is a pretty cool record for you to check out. Um, I would have to say my career highlight is definitely having the chance to play two years ago um, opening for my favorite band of all time which is KISS. We got to play with them on a boat nonetheless, it was the KISS Cruise and uh, it was a fan vote based on all the KISS fans who were on this boat and we were picked as a finalist and then eventually picked as the band that got to play with KISS on this boat. Uh, it was by far the coolest experience of my life. I like to find a lot more of the rare, specifically in the realm of thrash, you uh, stuff. I love like digging for golden crates is one of my favorite things to do. But when I started, of course, there was uh, the generic classics that everyone has to pick up. Uh, so you go, you know, dollar bin digging, and you get every Chicago album and every Boston album and every uh, Kim Mitchell record, and you know, I've got headpins and all that, all that stuff that you got to get from those one dollar, two dollar crates to start your collection. All the essentials. But uh, once I really figured out what I liked, it was all about metal. The first one was actually given to me by my dad, so I didn't buy it per se. Um, it's the first record I ever owned, and I really have to thank my dad for pretty much all my musical taste and everything I know and love about music. So it was Kiss, Duh, uh, Destroyer. It's by far their most ambitious record of the early early records. Amazing production, uh, Bob Ezrin and uh, experimenting with different sounds and different types of vocals and song structure, chords that they had never used. It really it was out of the comfort zone of the normal, very bluesy and four chord based Kiss records that we had, the first, the first few records. The next record is what I think is probably the first record I ever bought on my own. Probably came out of uh, the front first record and a dollar crate on Young Street one day when I was a kid visiting Toronto. I grew up in Ottawa. Um, it's Lighthouse One Fine Morning, and I would actually go on to really, really, really dig this record. I love big band stuff. I love Chicago, and so Lighthouse was kind of a, a natural thing for me to fall in love with the, the, the sounds, the, the horn section, and the inclusion of cello, and still having like really groovy and funky lyrics, and just, just an overall good vibe to it. I don't know, I ended up listening to this record a lot when I was young, and I probably still know every word to every song. <laughs> I bought this thinking it was the 50 Cent record, Get Rich or Die Trying, because yes, I'm nostalgic, I'm 25 and this record was pretty much the biggest thing uh, in rap music when I was listening to that stuff, uh, believe it or not, I did have my phase. And uh, yeah, I was super bummed to, I looked at it quick, I saw it, I saw the title, I bought it, I got home and I put it on and it's just the soundtrack and I mean, okay, but like I really didn't need a bunch of songs from Lloyd Banks and Young Buck and 50 Cent featuring Olivia. I got two here. Now uh, one's uh, doesn't really count because it's a re-release or the first ever vinyl release, but it's uh, Kill Cheerleader. In my opinion, the pretty much the coolest Toronto punk band or Canadian punk band for that matter, punk rock and roll of all time. From Canada, uh, this is their groundbreaking record or only full length called All Hail. Uh, everyone in my band Diamonds loves it. Uh, we covered. 
two of their songs whenever we feel like it. Uh, the other one is Times of Pride and Peril, the latest record from Holy Grail, a wicked, wicked heavy metal band out of Pasadena, California. Uh, we've had the pleasure of getting to know them over the years and playing with them a few times. Uh, it's a sweet gatefold on colored vinyl. Uh, it's really rad. Their music's pretty cool. They're unbelievable shredders. Well, I recently had the chance to go to Japan, which resulted in me spending pretty much every free moment of time uh, trying weird food, eating ramen, or record uh, digging. So I got Wicked Priest stuff, and compilations, Monsters of Rock stuff, Faster Pussycat, and uh, More Kiss. Oh, all with the Obi strips, of course. Uh, it's really cool when you buy records in Japan. They're all vintage records and they're in absolute pristine condition. Uh, the vinyl's untouched, uh, no scratches, no dust. Um, it, the record stores, like opening records and looking at the condition isn't a thing there the way it is in North America. Everything is just understood to be in perfect condition. Uh, all, all the lyric sheets, inserts, and of course you get Japanese translations in here. So definitely a big part of my collection, most prized part of my collection is all my Japanese stuff. And I've got rows and rows of it. This is just some a taste of some of the cooler stuff. Other most prized things, uh, this hilarious record that my dad used to play for me when I was a kid, Babe Ruth for Space. It's got one song on it that I think is tolerable to anyone out there. It's called The, uh, the Mexican. It's on side two. It's this long, ridiculous song. I actually went and saw them play live once and they played the song twice. I kid you not. It happened. They opened and closed with the same song. Priest, Sin After Sin had it on cassette when I was a little kid and it's by far the reason I credit my love to heavy metal is this record, thanks dad. And then by far my number one most prized piece is Led Zeppelin, live on Blueberry Hill, recorded at the LA Forum in 1970. This is the first ever pressing of this legendary bootleg. Playing in Diamonds is actually, I've pretty much met almost everyone I ever wanted to meet, or when I was a kid thought I'd ever get to meet, uh, rock star wise, but by far number one is Alice Cooper. He was, uh, not that he was just the most famous or anything, it was just the, the whole experience. He was so cool and, you know, we were backstage at a show, it was Maiden and Alice Cooper, and, you know, normally when you're backstage at a show, it's you got to find your moment to approach the, the uh, rock star and kind of introduce yourself and explain why the hell you're backstage and who you know. Um, but he he walked right up he walked right up to me and uh, offered if I wanted a photo with him and he was so cool it was like just hanging out with someone who I'd been friends with and we'd known each other for ten years it felt like it was he was just super humble super cool and super appreciative that there was a whole new generation of people my age and even younger still listening to his music and going to see his absolutely legendary shows yes I love cooking uh, aside from music cooking is my other passion. Um, been cooking since I was a little kid. Uh, my family uh, ran a catering company when I was a kid and all my uncles were restaurant types and so I used to go to work with them and peel peel potatoes and uh, diced tomatoes and all that sorts of stuff so I learned my knife skills pretty young and uh, yeah I love cooking. I currently cook. I was actually at work all night tonight cooking. Well it probably comes as no surprise but I'm pretty nerdy and I also love things like pinball and comic books and craft beer and riding bicycles and fancy coffee and I'm absolutely obsessed with cats. Um, anyone who probably knows me, that comes as no surprise, but out there in internet land, if you want a little more insight into my life, that's me. When I'm not on the road, I'm at home working in restaurants and playing with my adorable cat because I'm an absolute cat lover. No, well, not about me, but I think this channel is really cool and I checked out a bunch of your videos and it's rad what you're doing. And next time we'll do a video all about gear because as much as I love records and cooking and cats, I'm also a bit of a gearhead. So uh, we can chat guitars and amps and uh, rigs next time. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. I would love to do an episode with Daniel talking about guitar gear. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Daniel, thank you again for doing this episode. Your time and effort is much appreciated. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to leave a quick like and if you haven't subscribed yet, click that button so you never miss another episode again. Look below this video as well. I will leave some links to some Diamonds tunes as well as their website. Do check it out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all again in a couple of days. Until then, keep on spinning.